Technology is no longer an advantage to any network anywhere in the world. They all have about the same technology capabilities. They all have about the same data speeds. They all have, and, and it changes a little bit, but they're all equal. So the most important thing moving forward to differentiate themselves is content and applications. Wireless, you know, gave us a new freedom to take care of business and personal tasks without being tied to our desk. Wireless voice has been around for a long time. Um, wireless data services completes the loop because today data is just as important as wireless, we all know, uh, as voice. Real-time collaboration is more than just voice conferencing. Access to all of our information is important. And it started with access to email. The BlackBerry and some of the other devices were the first real devices that gave us the same power in the field with our voice phone, as, uh, with our data as our voice phone. The technology is moving rapidly. Any of you who read the trade pubs have got to have your heads spinning. The network operators have their heads spinning, and so does everybody else. Everybody's moving at the speed of light. We're going to talk a lot today about the fact that wireless data doesn't cost money. It saves money, and it makes money because it allows you to give better customer service, faster response, and keep in touch with all of your people in near real time. And now, with location-based services, not only keep in touch with them, but know where they are. So it's not just about voice anymore. Um, 3G systems support voice and broadband data. We had 1G, 2G, 2.5G, and 3G. And the differentiator is 3G gives us, you might say, DSL or cable speeds wirelessly. Not quite, but almost, and we're getting there, and you're going to see what the future holds. So we've made a lot of progress. We have all the access to the information, and it's simple and easy to do, and we're going to talk more about that. And it's not really that expensive. Wide area wireless connectivity to your notebook and your wireless device provides a new level of freedom. So it's not about voice and text anymore. It's about lots of other things. It's about voice and text and, and video and pictures. And it's about internet browsing and, and getting to our applications and graphics virtually anywhere we want them. So the total mobility solution means access to voice, corporate email, corporate data and information, information on the internet, and perhaps information from our vendors or our customers and probably a lot of things that aren't up there. And all of our worlds are running at warp speed. We have the networks and the tools to make it easier than ever before, and it's going to continue to get faster until we bump up against Shannon's Law. And it's amazing to me, Shannon wrote Shannon's Law in the late 40s, and it talks about the number of bits per hertz that you can transmit over a given piece of bandwidth, and there is a limit. And the only way that you're going to uh, move forward is to get closer to transmitters. So as we move forward, we're going to go, and we are today, and we're going to talk more about this, from large cells to pico cells to microcells, and now we have femto cells. And the whole idea is that we have to have more capacity on our wireless networks, and we have to have better bandwidth. Okay, let's talk about third generation wireless. And we're going to talk about fourth generation too, although I'm probably not going to call it fourth generation, I'm going to call it next generation. Paul Jacobs, the CEO of Qualcomm, kind of calls it Infinity. You know, it's whatever's next, whatever's out there. High speed broadband networks are in place all over the world. In the United States, we have three at the moment. AT&T has built out UMTS HSDPA in most of the major cities. Sprint and Verizon have built out uh, CDMA, EVDO, Rev0, and Rev A. Now, T-Mobile is missing from this list because T-Mobile didn't have enough spectrum to build out 3G. At the last auction, they just bought enough spectrum, so we will have four uh, third generation in the networks in the United States in the next year or so. The beauty of broadband is there's no hot spots to seek out and pay for. 
There's no security hassles. There's network and the networks are already include several layers of encryption, and we're not going to tell you that that's enough encryption because it's not, but it's a start, and it's something you can build on top of. There's a whole other generation waiting in the wings. If you want to call it 4G, you can. Uh, it'll be upon us in 2009, 2010. It's hard to explain to others about technology. And you know, one of the things, we teach salespeople from major networks who go in and call on corporations. And the first thing we try to teach them is don't talk about your network as being GSM or UMTS or CDMA. Talk about what it does and what you can do for the customer. If you ask a typical customer what technology their network uses, they'll tell you, I have a Nokia phone or I'm on the AT&T network. They don't have a clue about any of these terms, and they really don't need to. Uh, they just know what they want, and they know that it needs to work. So we need to le learn to tell them what it is in plain language.